Hey guys, welcome to Chris Mack. For today's video, I'm gonna take you on a POV drive of this Volvo C40 Recharge. This is dressed in a Fajor blue exterior with a Fajor blue interior and black. As equipped, this is around $60,000. You get 226 miles of range, 402 horsepower and 486 pound foot of torque. This is your window sticker right here. This does have the ultimate package with the 20 inch rims with five spoke. Various other features do come with the 360 camera and other different features. I'll show you guys the front of the C40 Recharge. The latch is all the way on this side right here. This is your front storage at about half a cubic feet of space. This is your key fob right here, so if you open the rear tailgate, you will find 15 cubic feet of space. A little bit more storage down there with a fixer flat kit. It is push button. We're gonna start in the back seats of the C40. Now I am five foot six and I have about three inches of leg room and about a inch of head room. You have three stage heated rear seats with a two USB-C ports, two air vents, and two cup holders in the center right there. Here's a look to the front cabin right there. You do have a full glass panoramic roof. This is the cockpit. I put something small in there. Now there is a start, you just get the sensor of you sitting in. Now I do like the exterior color brought into the interior. See those is all recycled on the environment. You have your light controls on this side, your white controls on this side. You can control your central screen and toggle through the different menus and functions. Looking right here in the center screen, which is the real party trick of the C40 recharge, you can see do have your touchscreen connectivity. This is how you control your heated seats and heated steering wheel. This is your home button right here. It's got your maps, charging your phone connection. We are going to try connecting my phone to it and see how that works. Bluetooth, iPhone C, next. Hey, with that, no, I should be a singer. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pair. As you can see everything is connecting. We're just gonna hit allow for everything. I'm gonna try a audio test to see how good the Harman Kardon sound system is. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't have Apple CarPlay, which is a little bit of an issue to me, but um, overall, the touchscreen connectivity is very good to use, and you do have Google Maps, so let's say you want to put in a navigation. The commands will work very good. And look at that. I love the feedback and the response of this right here. It's very easy to use. You just select the destination, and you just go. Come right back in the home, you have your different vehicle status features. So we'll show your charge port. Maps, Bluetooth, Sirius XM with AM, FM radio, Google Assistance, as well as Range Assistant. Let you know how far range you have to go. Climb control is controlled inside the infotainment. Flanked with your window defrost, volume track four back, SD card, two USB-C ports, a 12 volt as well as a wireless phone charger let's see if we can get the phone to work okay let's try this way 
there we go a little ashtray right there which is nice this is your gear shifter when you put it into reverse you can't see do you have your backup camera right there with rear cross traffic alert and braking you do have a 360 camera when you get closer to objects so you hit the 360 degree button right there and you can toggle through the different camera settings that you want so you can do your sides your front rear they're all independent from each other or you can just do it in this 360 view putting it back in the park got some storage right there storage right here if you want to throw something in there maps is right here in front of you you hit this button right here to toggle through if you want the view on or off you can toggle through your different functions over here in this side is your volume controls as well as track forward back as well as telematics and voice command on this side look up top now this doesn't open and comes as is but we're gonna go ahead and take the c40 recharge for a drive and see how she does all right we're behind the wheel of the volvo c40 recharge now a couple things to point out now unlike the other like plug-in hybrid volvo models this doesn't have any drive modes it's just one default drive Now, as mentioned earlier, the 78 kilowatt hour battery creates 226 miles of range. Let me go ahead and pull out, see how. <laughs> wow. So you have two electric motors that each make 201 horsepower. Which I mean, that's literally as much as a Toyota Camry base model, which is like 203. But you have two of those. This vehicle is about 4,700 pounds. And it just, <laughs> it just takes off. And wow. So you get 226 miles of range and at $60,000 as so equipped. I do have to say that's a little bit low on the range if I'm being honest, 226. I would like to see Volvo maybe create a better um, battery pack system to get the range up a little bit. If you, even if you look at like the Ionic 5 and the Tesla and the Kia EV6, those are like the benchmark for the segment as far as electric SUV crossovers that are semi-affordable, dare I say. <laughs> but um, I have to say though, unlike those, the acceleration of this is pretty good. That was just the first time flowing. But I mean, you do have a different various technology Ready, steady, go. God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Man, this thing's a rolling roller coaster. Like it really is. Like, you got nobody coming to me. I gotta do it again. This is. Wicked. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this thing is quick. Now, 0 to 60 is rated at about, depending on the surface and how you drive, around 4.4 seconds to 4 seconds. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, we gotta we gotta do from one like seriously like, whoa all right Ooh. i can feel it right there around the corner this is definitely not set up for more sporty driving this is more of a vehicle for comfort and luxury I 
think I should do it again. <laughs> this thing is a, <laughs> this thing is ridiculous. Well, let me put the um one pedal drive on so we can max out our range capacity. I tell you though, the uh, one pedal drive or the regen is very strong. This is definitely what I call more on the aggressive setting of regen. Wish there was a way though, as I said earlier, to customize that because it could be a little bit better. This is really gives cars in the segment. The other EVs are uh, run for its money as far as the base offering goes. Like specifically, if you look at the Ionic 5 EV6, those are about, I would say, a third of a second slower in acceleration. So this is honestly, has the bragging rights as far as the base offering for EVs go with 402 horsepower. This, this thing is just awesome, man. <laughs> but honestly, though, after driving for a few miles, I do have to say that acceleration is probably the only attribution I can give this car. Because, I mean, the range isn't as good as the other ones. <laughs> See, the range isn't as good. And this thing is heavy at 4,700 pounds. That's so equipped. Take the next right onto Shadow Lake Road, then turn right onto Village Drive. But yeah, just driving like normally, it does a good job. Take the next right onto Village Drive, then and of course, as stated before, there is no see, there is no drive mode selection, so you just it's a preset. You just get in and you go. It's all dependent upon your pedal inputs, the acceleration pedal. Let's have steering assist with adaptive cruise. I'll show you guys in a sec. Woo -hoo. God. <laughs> All right, so it has um, adaptive cruise with following distance. So you can increase and decrease the following distances by five car limbs. So right now I'm following this Camry. Now, I do have to say, though, the adaptive cruise or the drive pilot, as Volvo calls it, is, I would say, more on the advanced side as far as the adaptive cruise controls go. And a lot of adaptive cruise controls, you got to set a speed, but this one is adaptive. So you put on the following distance, and it will follow the traffic in front of it. You get a nice rumble through the steering wheel if you go out of your lane. But yeah, I have to say though, this thing, the system is very damn good, man, to be honest. I'm not lying at all. This thing is good. Woohoo! Yeah. Alright. Of course.
course, we got a Tesla. All right, so you will put two following distances. This adaptive cruise is very good. And lane keeping assist keeps you in the lanes. So if you were to drift out, it will pull you back over. Nice shimmy through the steering wheel. And you can see what the navigation also put in as well. It does predict the battery charge right there. It says we'll be at 67% by the time we get back to the dealership. Right now we're at 69%. But I do have to say though that the range is actually drains a lot slower than other vehicles, other EV vehicles. Which is pretty good. Getting on to the highway. Of course, as we sit in traffic, I have to throw in the adaptive cruise. We put one following distance. See the speed actually does come up right there in the central display. That was one thing that I wish was actually right there with the adaptive cruise. We'll turn that off. Now at highway speeds you can see the um see and feel the wind noise and the road noise. It isn't like a regular Volvo where it is masked out with the powertrain. Well, that's a nice 650 ride right there. Sweet. You know, you got something done to that. Turn Sounds back. awesome. The I-495 North ramp, then keep right at the fork. But um, you can definitely hear like the road noise at speeds, definitely over 60 miles an hour. You can hear the road noise and the tire noise. And as I say that with a gas vehicle, it gets masked out. <laughs> the turbo noise. About the limit right here as far as cornering goes these are all season tires these aren't the full-on like summer tires or anything
Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. But I do have to say, though, that this, um, the acceleration and everything is definitely a lot quicker than if we compare a test amount of wide long range or even like RN5 EV6. It's definitely a lot quicker, but this is the only offering, so I know those will be offering a higher horsepower version. But I am excited to see what Volvo does in the future with their different vehicles. And the graphics right there, you got turning lines with trajectory. You can see out the side. This thing is clear and crisp. Now, I do wish you did have, like, the Germans do, like, the full, where you can look around the vehicle. That is one thing that is missing for making this, like, one of the better 360 cameras, but it is pretty good as well. Still got the one pedal drive. You can really feel it when you take it off. You know, I have a little idea for Volvo. As you can see right here, it's showing the navigation. Now, it would be cool. Imagine they put like augmented navigation from like a camera up front, like right here in the screen. Oh, that'd be like awesome. Right here in the driver's line of sight. The more I'm looking at the range as it goes down, like very slowly, I have to say that this is actually honestly starting to be more conservative when it comes to the range that gets depleted from the battery. Like I floated a couple times and still, the percentage has went down by much. So we left the dealership about 11.7 miles ago with about 72%. Right now it's on 67%. And that's honestly pretty good. Now getting into my conclusion in the last mile of this video, I did the set of the C40 Recharge. <laughs> the C40 Recharge is very, very quick EV. Obviously being the 
standard model. There is no upper trim or lower trim or anything. It's just out the box. This is the C40 priced at $60,000. Now, if you compare that to other vehicles, like if you look at the Ionic 5 EV6, those are about 55, 56,000. And then you got a Tesla model wide long range, which is over $70,000. Wow. But we'll obviously sell like hotcakes. <laughs> But, um, so you got those, you have the Mustang Mach-E, Turn left on the and a couple of others, I, I know I'm missing one, but then we got all of these different vehicles, with different options and everything, but how does this stack up? Now, in terms of acceleration, you know, this is great as far as the standard is with Liz version for $60,000. But when you look around, you got the nice materials, like the feeling of the interior. Everything is very sturdy. It doesn't feel like it's built like in the middle of nowhere. Even the gear shifter right here. It's very sturdy. Materials. Soft touch up here. Soft touch. Then it has a little bit of personality. So you have the exterior blue color brought inside right here, right here on the flooring. I mean, they could have just made it black. They could have just made it generic or bland, but they didn't. They went something different. I do have to give them credit with that. But when it all boils down to the various other features of how does it handle, like for an EV where it's not really the handling type, and it does have the good range capabilities, but it's a nice proposition or start from Volvo. If you're a Volvo diehard, this would be perfect for you. So as we wrap up and we turn into our destination, those are my final remarks of the Volvo C40 Recharge. I would like to see 